Well, just before we have Mass for the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time, which will start in just a moment, just a word of explanation. Just a few hours ago, I was told by my very wonderful doctor that the ulcer that he's been treating on my leg really needs a bit more attention, so I'm heading into hospital for uh, hopefully just two or three days. And for that reason, to try and make sure a Mass is available from St Simon's, your virtuous... Oops virtual parish that you will have a mass available it will be the mass for the 25th sunday last year because we couldn't pre-record one at such short notice but at least the readings will be today's the homily belongs to last year but it may or may not have timely references which are suitable or unsuitable chances are i was thinking about the grand final at the time who knows but just so that you understand why that is the case, and that also, of course, applies to our radio congregation on 89.9 The Light. So just a word of explanation, hopefully further down the track by next weekend, we'll be back on track as per normal. So thanks for your understanding, and God bless. Welcome to St Simon's Parish on the 25th Sunday in Ordinary Time. The readings of today's Mass highlight the majesty of God and our dependence upon him. At the same time, however, we are reminded by the same sacred scriptures that our God is a generous and compassionate God, ready to forgive and to welcome all who seek him with a sincere heart, even at the last minute. Please stand to welcome our celebrant Father Kevin as we sing our opening hymn. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome, everyone, as we come by everyone. Have I no idea who everyone is because you're all out there normally in days of old. I've been looking at a church full of people, but you're all out there in cyberspace, cyberland, whatever, in our very special congregation that we have through 89.9 The Light and welcome to all of you on radio. But it's a great privilege nonetheless to be part of your life and to be able to bring the Mass to you and to bring all the things that are, well, we've 
trying to manage and negotiate during these very difficult times. Please God, in a week's time things will start to ease a little bit in Melbourne, wait and see. I think so many people are really doing their darndest to try and make sure that that will happen into the future. But in the meantime, there's all sorts of different burdens that people are carrying and particularly in these recent times as we know the pain of loss of loved ones is a very burdensome one. Special prayer in this Mass for Claire Ross who died recently and we had a lovely lady, one of our parishioners who passed away just a week or so ago and the funeral was on Thursday and the loss to the family there, Therese Claire. So we remember the people who are precious to us and we particularly recognise the pain of people who have suffered the loss of a loved one in these very, very difficult times. Let's just pause for a moment now at the beginning of our Mass and we'll ask for forgiveness for our sins. Lord, you are generous and just in all your ways. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you call us to work together in unity and compassion. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you invite us to share a place in your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, you founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbour. Grant that by keeping your precepts we may gain eternal life. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. In the first reading... The Just One is put to the test. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The godless say to themselves, Let us lie in wait for the virtuous man, since he annoys us and opposes our way of life. He reproaches us for our breaches of the law and accuses us of playing false to our upbringing. Let us see if what he says is true. Let us observe what kind of end he himself will have. If the virtuous man is God's son, God will take his part and rescue him from the clutches of his enemies. Let us test him with cruelty and with torture and thus explore this gentleness of his and put his endurance to the proof. Let us condemn him to a shameful death. Since he will be looked after, we have his word for it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, The Lord upholds my life. The Lord upholds my life. O God, save me by your name, by your power. Uphold my cause. O God, hear my prayer. Listen to the words of my mouth. The Lord upholds my life. For proud men have risen against me. Ruthless men seek my life. They have no regard for God. The Lord upholds my life. But I have God for my help. The Lord upholds my life. I will sacrifice to you with a willing heart and praise your name for it is good. The Lord upholds my life. 
In the second reading, St. James teaches that the wisdom that comes from above makes for peace. A reading from the letter of St. James. Wherever you find jealousy and ambition, you find disharmony and wicked things of every kind being done. Whereas the wisdom that comes down from above is essentially something pure. It also makes for peace and is kindly and considerate. It is full of compassion and shows itself by doing good. Nor is there any trace of partiality or hypocrisy in it. Peacemakers, when they work for peace, sow the seeds which will bear fruit in holiness. Where do these wars and battles between yourselves first start? Isn't it precisely in the desires fighting inside your own selves? You want something and you haven't got it, so you are prepared to kill. You have an ambition that you cannot satisfy, so you fight to get your way by force. Why you don't have what you want is because you don't pray for it. When you do pray and don't get it, it is because you have not prayed properly. You have prayed for something to indulge your own desires. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel Acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. God has called us with the gospel to share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner going out at daybreak to hire workers for his vineyard. He made an agreement with the workers for one denarius a day and then sent them to his vineyard. Going out at about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and he said to them, you go to my vineyard too and I will give you a fair wage. So they went. At about the sixth hour and again, At about the ninth hour, he went out and did the same. Then at about the eleventh hour, he went out and found more men still standing around. And he said to them, Why have you been standing here idle all day? Because no one has hired us, they said. And he said to them, You go to my vineyard too. In the evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his bailiff, Call the workers and pay them their wages starting with the last arrivals and ending with the first. So those who were hired at about the 11th hour came forward and they received one denarius each. And when the first came, they expected to get more, but they too received one denarius each. They took it, but grumbled at the landowner. The men who came last, they said, have done only one hour and you have treated them the same as us, though We have done a heavy day's work in all the heat. And he answered one of them and said, My friend, I am not being unjust to you. Did we not agree on one denarius? Take your earnings and go. I choose to pay the last comer as much as I pay you. Have I no right to do what I like with my own? Why be envious? Because I am generous. Thus the last will be first and the first last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I was never much good at, what do we call them? Charades, charades or charades, depending on what school you went to, what state you grew up in, I guess. Though it was a, it's a marvellous movie back in the 60s, Charade, Charade with Audrey Hepburn and Cary Grant many years ago. Anyhow, so have a think, what is this? Uh, 
as something that lots of people would do every day and hardly anyone has done with a few small exceptions for months and months since the pandemic started. That's what you would do when you were in the window seat of a plane and the plane has landed and as soon as the little bell rings and you unfasten your seat belts, everyone will get up and those on the window seats, of course, under the overhead luggage racks would be like this. And they would stay like that for, could be five, six, seven minutes or longer till eventually they got off. I always used to look at that in great wonder. I wonder when I'll do it again, be on a plane to even observe it. But it's quite fascinating because when you're getting off a plane, well, when we used to get off a plane, there would be so many issues of time because it'd be a long way to walk, and you get to the baggage carousel, and find it's shifted to another carousel and have to go there and then the luggage goes round and round and round and eventually yours turns up. So how much time was saved for people putting themselves in this uncomfortable position for five or six minutes just to supposedly get off the plane a bit quicker? We are an impatient breed of what we are in this day and age of humanity. We use every minute and we expect everybody else to do the same. I sent you an email 10 minutes ago and you haven't answered. Oh, really? Yeah. Get a life, for goodness sake. We have only a certain number of hours in our day and a certain number of hours in our life. But we use probably between a quarter of and a third of them to sleep. What a waste of time that is. The whole issue of patience, using our time, and knowing what's wasted and what isn't, is a real key area of life. But we have become so strenuous in the way in which we do things, so impatient, that we can look at something like we've got at the moment, who would have ever thought? We're at the six month mark now since the lockdowns and the restrictions and the COVID crisis began. I think about March the 20th or so, it was really starting to hit us, so it's just on six months. And how would we have reacted if we had been told back then, well, this is going to go on for six months plus, and it might be even plus plus. One of the things which would make us so irritated would be the amount of time we would be, inverted commas, wasting. Well, is it wasted or isn't it? This extraordinarily important parable that Jesus talks about today of the laborers in the vineyard really gives us another element of this. We know the story pretty well. Those who, when it got hired the first time, say, oh, terrific, we've got a job today and we're going to get one denarius and that's a fair wage and they were happy with that. And then, of course, jealousy crept in at the end of the day and they were pretty annoyed with all of that and the rest is there in the parable. Like many of Jesus' masterly parables, there's lots of lessons within the lesson. And one of the key things is about the people who were hired at the 11th hour. Why? Because they stayed there and waited for 11 hours. If they hadn't been there, if they got to the 6th hour or the ninth and said, I'm sick of this, I'm going home. It's a waste of time being here. So I'll go home and put on the telly. Well, they wouldn't have done that because telly hadn't been invented then, but I'll go home and do something else. Or I'll just go home because I'm wasting my time here. So it turns out they weren't. They weren't. They got 11 out of 12 for their patience and they actually had to work one out of 12 for the whole day's wages. It's quite fascinating when you think of it 
what is wasted time? What do we consider to be such a nuisance? A while back, I had a flat battery in a vehicle I was driving at the day, and I had to get the RACV, and they've got that great little tracking system so you know how someone's coming. But it still took about, it was a busy day, and it took about 40 minutes or so before it came. So what do I do? I'm sitting there. I had a chance to stop, to think, to reflect, and to pray. Not just pray for the RACV man that he'd get a hurry on or wouldn't get a more urgent call than mine, but just for a moment take a deep breath and say, okay, I'll use this time. I'm not doing anything else. I could have turned on the radio. I could have played some music. I thought, no, I'll just take this half hour just to be quiet. And it was terrific. <laughs> hadn't, done, hadn't done that for ages. It was not wasted time. It was a time which I had to wait. There's a difference between wait and waste, indeed. And from its many messages that this parable has, it reminds us of the things that we need to do to take on board, and, and maybe this is an especially important time. Over the past six months, there it is again, six months, have we wasted our time? You might say, no, I haven't wasted my time. I cleaned up the garage and I painted the spare room and did a few jobs. It hasn't been wasted. Wasted time is just not about doing things. Wasted time, or time that we have, which we might think can be wasted, can be well used maybe just by stopping, thinking, praying, putting life into its perspective. Now that's been forced on us and maybe a lot more than we are comfortable with and maybe there's a degree of frustration and even anger at why we're in this situation. But does that make it any better? The standing up in the plane when the plane has landed and getting like this, does that make us get home any quicker? Of course it doesn't. So maybe at the six-month mark, this little gospel parable is very helpful to us. It's the point at which we say, well, where are we? Have we achieved something? Have the lockdowns for all the inconvenience and their frustration and so on, which is there for all of us, me too, I can assure you. But have we maybe been able to achieve something and given that we'll still have some into the future, how are we going to use that? Our time should never be wasted. It's time that we have to make a phone call. It's time that we have to build our relationship with God and with one another. The fact that it's not filled with incessant activity doesn't matter. Those labourers who waited, 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 for 11 hours had their reward. And there was a real point that Jesus was making in this absolutely fantastic parable. So we think of some of the things that are the nice phrases that we use. I just wrote a few of them down to make sure I remember them. We should all remember them maybe more often. Things like, let go and let God one day at a time. Good song. Easy does it. Take it quietly, but take it. I've always, always loved that one. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. Put first things first. And then, as the Eagles reminded us in one of their great songs, that's the band, not the football team. Take it easy. Actually, not only did they sing about take it easy, but they sang about wasted time, one of the most marvellous tracks worth a listen to. It's a love song, of course. It's about a relationship that went wrong. But in the long run, it says, hey, we've learned something about life. 
we've learned something about ourselves. I could have done so many things, baby, if I could only stop my mind from wondering what I left behind and worrying about this wasted time. Another love has come and gone, and the years keep rushing on. I remember what you told me before you went out on your own. Sometimes to keep it together, we've got to leave it alone. So you can get on with your search, baby, and I can get on with mine. And maybe someday we'll find that it wasn't really wasted time. The 11th hour workers weren't wasting their time, just patiently waiting. They learned something, they gained something, and maybe as we move into the sixth, the seventh month of our pandemic, and all that goes with it, we can make sure that, well, and be reassured that we're not wasting our time either. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's now stand, and if you're at home, you, you can choose whether to stand or not. I'd stretch the legs a bit, and we pray our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You are just and merciful, Holy One. Hear the cries of those in need as we come to you in prayer. We pray for the leaders at all levels. May they move beyond power and control, their priority being the rights and justice that their people deserve. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the doctors, nurses and healthcare workers who are placing their lives at risk in order to keep us safe. We also pray for the emergency service workers and those working in care homes for the young and the old. We ask you to protect them from illness and sustain their energy as they work hard to bring this pandemic under control. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all people suffering from the effects of the lockdown. May they be supported in their efforts to deal with this, especially those with livelihoods which have been affected. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our parish as we turn confidently to God and continue to move forward with our work as missions. May the Holy Spirit open our hearts, helping us to reach out to our neighbours and reframe our thinking and inspiring decisions that bring renewed life. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick of our parish and those who care for them. We pray for those who have died recently. We also pray for Claude Anthony, Phyllis Harrington, Alfred Torno, Denzel and Yola Grant, Orico family, Reese family, and all whom we hold sacred in our hearts. May God welcome them into the eternal kingdom to share the reward of their eternal service. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we make these prayers and those within our hearts with confidence in the name of Christ Jesus, who is Lord for ever and ever. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. God, we ask you to receive us. So please, for the sacrifice we offer you with humble and confidence. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, receive with favour the offerings of your people, so that what we profess with devotion and faith may be ours through these heavenly mysteries. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now we possess the pledge of eternal life. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, all the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Special remembrance in this Mass for Claire Ross. And all who have died 
in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may be heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour are yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. You live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And wherever we are and whoever we're with and as best we can, we are offer each other a sign of peace and friendship in Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our spiritual communion prayer, which we say at Mass each day, gives us the opportunity, even if we are unable to receive communion in the way in which we would wish, we used to call that usual way, but maybe this is becoming a bit more usual as we move through these difficult times, but it is nonetheless a very effective way of engaging with the Lord's presence in the Eucharist. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. It's not from 
Let us pray. Lord, graciously raise up those who renew with this sacrament. May we come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Usually in the old days, the good old days, way back, we would have a few notices and so on. Not much to put in terms of notices these days because of parish activities not being what they were. However, there was one little, perhaps classified advertisement put in, asking for anyone that might have some space, empty garage or even an empty half the garage, to use for storage within the Roville or thereabouts area. If you could let me know, that could be very helpful indeed. Just probably from about six months or so. Thereabouts, if you, you know, sold a car for whatever reason, had it impounded and had it towed away, like I did a few weeks back, but then that's another story, and it's sitting in the garage, is sitting empty, and you might have some space for a while. If you could let me know, that could be go to for a very useful purpose, if you can. That's just in the Roeville area. If you're watching this from Argentina, perhaps you might not be able to assist. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.